Hello and welcome to this short webinar where we will be looking at sport and mental health and how you can support children and young people and the people working with them. We will look at how you get involved in Mental Health Awareness Week, which is running from the 9th to the 15th of May. And the theme this year is loneliness. My name's Di Murray, and I'm one of the consultants with the Child Protection in Sport Unit. And I work on the performance side of sport, supporting them with their safeguarding. Here at the CPSU, we want to use this campaign to highlight that elite sport, most of what you see on the TV or read about, is about people. Some have had or having some mental health concerns, as after all, athletes, riders, players, swimmers, they're all people first. So go and get a drink and listen in. As you can see, sport creates headlines, and here are some talking about elite athletes' poor mental health and well-being. In 2014, the BBC reported how lonely and isolating the sport can be. The perception of childhood dreams coming true was the opposite to how lonely this lifestyle in sport was. And this was not only for the athletes, but it included the coaches and the managers too. So it isn't surprising that sport has mental health issues. In 2017, The Guardian were discussing the pressures of elite sport at major sporting events following the Rio Olympics and Paralympics. Once again, the mental health of elite athletes and staff was under the spotlight. In October 2020, football joined the news feeds as players started talking about their low mood and anxiety. In August 2021, Simone Biles, the US gymnast, publicly discussed her mental health whilst competing at the Tokyo Olympics when she withdrew from the competition. Almost every news channel featured this story, showing the impact a celebrity status has when talking about mental health. In July 2021, Naomi Osaka, the elite female tennis player, made a statement stating she was withdrawing from the next Grand Slam because of her own mental health concerns. And Ben Stokes, the cricket player, the New England captain, also featured in the news as he said he was taking a break to look after his own mental health. But it's worth noting, remember your mental health can fluctuate and being active, getting involved in sport is a positive way of promoting good mental health too. The World Health Organization's definition of mental health is on this slide. The words cope under the normal stresses of life, life resonate with me. As you can see, the life of athletes, the coaches, the multidiscipline teams wrapped around the team, and even the parents don't feel under control all the time. The pressures of a four-year competition schedule for the Olympics and Paralympics isn't linear, and it has its ups and downs. So loneliness, the theme of the Mental Health Awareness Campaign, can be an indicator of poor mental health and something to look out for. So with anxiety or depression, for example, are people withdrawing from situations or feeling isolated, as these might be a symptom or a sign? So you might, be, might hear people talking about these things or observe them in your role in the sport or as a parent. Young people in sport may stress about changing their coach, being selected for the next competition, fitting in with their friends outside of the sport or managing their study and training. These worries may cause anxiety and feelings of loneliness. Knowing who they can talk to about their feelings and thoughts may help reduce this anxiety. So who can be affected? I think you can see, anybody can be affected by poor mental health and well-being. So here are some statistics for you. Half of mental ill health starts by the age of 15. And 75% 70 of mental ill health develops by the age of 18, as reported by the Chief Medical Officer back in 2013. So at 15 years of age, it's significant, as in some sports, this is maybe the start of the performance programme transitioning from participation to the elite side of sport in talent programmes. So now they're really focusing on sport as their future to achieve their dreams. In the International Olympic Committee consensus statement on mental health for elite athletes, one of the key messages that came across was that the coaches and the multidiscipline team needed to be educated to notice and to be equipped to be able to signpost mental health concerns in order to prevent a mental health crisis. 
So checking in with young athletes in front of you, noticing when they're not their usual self, a way as a coach, a welfare officer or a parent could support them. Understanding what else matters to the young athlete as well as sport is important to know. Planning for those potential firsts for the young athlete may help reduce their concerns. For example, is this the first time the athlete's been on a training camp abroad? Explaining how the team travel through the airport together. Do they wear the team kit? Will their phone work abroad? And who can they talk to on the trip? May all be answered before traveling and prevent worry. To support young athletes in sport, the coaches and the support personnel need to look after their own mental health. They are under immense pressures around your major sporting event. They have big, big highs and lows, as discussed in the research by Hill and, and by Smith. They may have similar concerns to athletes. The stresses may include for a coach that they are far away from home for long periods of time, maybe six weeks into a games, which includes the holding camp. They lose their social connections with family and friends because they're away from home. Their sleep may be impacted because they're away from home and struggle to switch off. And you can't show this because in sport, you're supposed to be resilient, you're supposed to be strong. And the stigma of showing you're weak. The blues after the games when the routine and structure is removed is another key time to make sure that we look after the mental health of coaches and those wrapped around our athletes. Major games may impact on the mental health of the coach, the physio, the psychologist, the strength and conditioning coach, for example, as they may feel lonely and isolated. Addressing these issues with everyone traveling, the athletes, the coaches, and all the support staff will provide the opportunity for all to recognize that they are not the only one and reduce these feelings of loneliness. Reinforcing it's okay to talk about it as we're all experiencing similar feelings, you aren't by yourself. But the lead safeguarding officers in sports, national governing bodies, are not immune to feeling isolated and lonely. Hartill and Lang's research in 2014 reported lead safeguarding officers felt unsupported by the national governing bodies. They got complex roles dealing at times with different and emotional concerns of abuse across all sport, from participation through to performance. So they may suffer with the mental health too, so we need to look after them. So what can we do? So now it's time to start taking positive action and actually do something. We've been talking about it, so now let's go and do something. Let's connect, exactly as the campaign says, connect with someone. Connecting with someone is a two-way process. It's good for you and it's good for them. Social relationships are critical to promoting well-being. It's a fundamental human need. To build your resilience, you connect and check in with them. It's going to make you feel good too. So think about how you would feel if someone just called you for a chat. How would it make you feel if you called somebody out of the blue? So give it a try. Who are you going to connect with? As someone who interacts with children in sport organisations, it's important that you look for ways that you can connect with young athletes. We've come up with a few ideas that you could use in the sports sessions to help you to build this communication between young people, supporting them, connecting with others and to reduce that loneliness. So how about coaches too? You all write down a fact about yourselves that you're happy to share. You have a lucky dip and then you have to find out who the fact belongs to by chatting to the individuals in the group. Or at the start of the coaching session, how don't you start it that everybody's day been today with a thumbs up or it's in the middle or a thumbs down and ask if anyone wants to talk about it. The coach or the welfare officer now knows who they may want to check in during that session. So who are you going to connect with? I'm sure you'll be surprised what you learn by listening. For example, at the NSPCC, we're supporting the Mental Health Awareness Connect campaign and we're having a coffee chain. We're having a conversation with somebody in the organisation that we don't know. And I'm really looking forward to this. And I hope you are too. So hopefully you now have a plan ready to connect with someone. If you want to have more information on the campaign, follow on us on Twitter at the CPSU and have a look at our mental health and wellbeing pages on the website around Elite Sport. We have more webinars planned discussing mental health and wellbeing in the Elite Sport, so keep in touch.
good luck and enjoy connecting with your conversations. Mm-hmm.